Welcome, one and all. My name is Rex, and welcome to our first episode playing as the Russian Republic. The date is the, date is the 1st of January, 1936. Gathering storm. Dark times are coming in Europe. Hitler has consolidated his power, and his attention is increasingly drawn beyond Germany's borders. Mussolini's Italy continues to embark upon daring military adventures while the Empire of Japan stands poised to attack Chinesia. Almost 20 years have passed since the end of the Great War, and the world's yet again with doused in gasoline. A single spark may be all it takes. By the way, the reason that we have called the other series, um, Fix Your AI Paradox, if you went to the end, is because at the end, what happened is you would see that Germany declared war on the Soviet Union before they even had defeated Poland. And I've had this happen to me twice, as playing as Austria-Hungary, and I'm bloody angry. Okay, now the brief history of the Russian military junta is led by Peter Rangel, since the Russian white victory in the, in the Civil War, Peter Rangel has served as the Supreme Commander of the Russia as the head of a military junta. Even with the new communist, even with the communists defeated, things are not well in this new Russia. Bolshevik insurgency has hampered the junta the entire time, leading to economic stagnation and the nobles' general rule over their own petty fiefdoms. At the expense of the common man, it has become clear every day that significant change has come to Russia, lest it collapse into another civil war. Let's get started. Look at the Russia, look. That's the Soviet anthem, I know. You don't have to bloody well tell me. We're not going Soviet. We're going Anastasia. Um, it's because I, I think it's interesting and I want to see what the path is. It seems a bit longer as well. Anyway. I could go with Trotsky, but I'd rather just go with the Junta. Welcome to the Russian White Victory. In this alternative scenario, General Peter Rangel took charge of the Russian White Army during the Russian Civil War far sooner than he did historically. Leaned in the victory over the Bolshevik Red Army, since then he has ruled as the Supreme Commander of Russia at the head of a military junta. Even though the communists defeated, things are not well in the new Russia. Bolshevik insurgency has hampered the Red junta the entire time, leading to economic stagnation. The nobles and generals rule over their own petty fiefdoms at the expense of the common man. It has become clear every day that significant changes come to Russia, lest it collapse into another civil war. Shut up and let me play! Okay. So we got. Oh, that's good. That's good. We got 11 tanks. That's pretty good. I mean, I'll be honest. 11 tanks is pretty good. We got 22 horses. Well, you know what we'll do with our horses. We'll put them under Mr. Calvary Leader. This guy. And we'll deploy him on the Romanian front. And he should be able to rush real quick through and take them out. And just take that mountain area. Can you usually get it to be, uh, well, that's another hole. Which you can do, like, three lines, but you can only seem to do two attacks, which is a bit sad, but we deal. Anyway, 18 divisions. We'll place these guys on the Romanian front. Or we'll place them in the Belarus front. We'll get four tank divisions. And we'll deploy them. Oh gosh, we got- we can deploy a motor- Two divisions, we'll deploy two more there. Eighteen divisions, plus... One of these divisions. Four divisions. And then we'll deploy these guys also on the Romania- or the- Basically the whatever I can't even speak, so just forget what I'm saying. Anyway,
four divisions, we'll deploy them over here. Then we'll get our one infantry division. And deploy them there. Anyway, we seem to have a pretty good front. 13 divisions over here. We're going to have these guys hold this front. They're going to be holding Crimea. They'll hold it well. I sure bet they will. They better, at least. 26. 24 divisions. Let's get these guys and draw them in a rear line over here. So in some ways we're stronger than the actual, we're stronger than the actual, what's it called, the, the Soviet Union, and in some ways we're weaker, so. We're just only going to go halfway this time. Sorry about taking so long doing this, I just feel it's important when the German attack does eventually come. 28 divisions and we can draw the line over here <laughs> then we'll eventually have a tank army deployed right there smash right through the German line Seven divisions will deploy these guys under George Zhukov. We'll deploy them right there. I don't have exactly as many divisions as I would like. I would like to have a few more to tell the truth, but you know what? I can deal with this. I wish they were more spread out and they weren't all in Petrograd, but I guess they're forming a defensive line against any sort of attack. I guess, I'm not sure, Moscow's kind of close, it's a bit scary, I don't love it, but, so we can get, I guess we'll get those areas. They were I saw a prayer for the soul. I don't want the Germans to get anything from us. Um, stimulus package. Our economy is not doing too well, so let's get a stimulus package. Sure. I can actually click that, so there we go. And let's go. Probably need to assign some generals, so I'll assign. These guys are. They have some tanks, so I'll assign this guy. He's pretty good. Um, this guy I'll assign Vladimir. These guys I'll assign infantry. Uh, infantry leader. These guys I'll assign. I guess we'll assign. This guy, he's pretty good. And assign this guy. Get Georgi Zhukov under Peter Rangal. He feels better to switch them out under and get these guys under Anton. Anyway, let's get started.
So we're gonna have to get that. Um, stimulus package. We're probably gonna go with strength in the pact. Or hunt down Bolsheviks. Maybe we'll go down strength in the package. Strength in... That will help them in the long run. It will help us. The militarization of the Rhineland. Italy took one state, Ethiopia was annexed. That is not great for us. But it's not even easy, right? We have two battleships. I mean, it's not the strongest navy, to be fair, but it's a, it's a navy. Electronic or mechanical engineering, let's go for mechanical computing. So here we can go down. Anastasia, so we can go. Uh, that's interesting. Land re reform. Poor education. Oh, that's not fantastic. So we're gonna have to strengthen the pact. Um expand the Okinawa Second London the Hill 3D conference time while they restrict themselves. Oh gosh, I can go for a silent workhorse, which is exactly what I'm gonna more popular figurehead, which would help us with a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna go with the popular figurehead. He's basically generally very good, so that's what I'm gonna go with, so it will help us with production. Basic machine tools, let's go for dispersed industry. I guess we can afford to assign two guys over there. They can deal in the mountains pretty well, so they should be decent enough. I'm worried. I don't know if we're going to be able to hold off the German horde. Intelligence report. There must be a reason the Bolsheviks want her. Find this woman. With the expansion of the Okinawa, we better are able to track with combat the Bolsheviks. The head of the Okinawa's approach, Frank Goldson, updated intelligence report. It appears that the Bolsheviks are targeting two individuals for assassination. One is an important politician based out of Moscow. It is no surprise that the communists would target him. However, the other target is an agency baffled. But apparently, it's a peasant woman living in Yekaterinburg, found at the top of the list carried by a Bolshevik the ass assassin. The agent wouldn't have mentioned someone so inconsequential for the odd priority placed on her by the Bolsheviks, where the protection be should be prioritized. There must be a reason. The Bolsheviks find this woman. So that's Anastasia, and we're gonna hunt down the Bolsheviks.
Peter Rangel is very nice, though. The Black Baron. Unfortunately, is pretty terrible mili- or what's it called? Political power speed, which is annoying. I don't love that. So, we're gonna get rid of this guy. National Spain is declared war on Spain. I guess we can give this guy cavalry expert, which will be helpful for him. He's got offensive doctrine, he's charismatic. This guy will go with um Panzer Leader. will be helpful. Panzer expert. This guy, Vladimir, we don't need to do anything with him. This guy, we can go for it. Max entrenchment, that'll be good. This guy, we can go for charismatic. Defensive doctrine. Um, Go, I guess, for attack. Fortunately, that's the max amount of trades we can get. But offensive doctrine will be helpful for us. Hunt down these Bolsheviks. Hunt down the Bolsheviks, yes. Let's get rid of... This isn't working. The meeting is on Ritzen. Games of the 11th Olympiad. The games are concluded. I love how they all have little custom things. That's nice to see. I don't. Oh, I don't know why the non-alliance considered the socials. Anyway. And tell these guys to attack. The meeting in Zarbets and all of our efforts since 1921 have been accomplished very little. The Bolsheviks have played us for over 15 years. The economy is on the brink of collapse, and our science and culture have not progressed since the end of the Great War. We need to do something. Rangel summoned the representatives from the military high command, several political parties, and some of the greatest minds in all of Russia to develop a new plan to tackle these issues. Gather thy representatives. Hurrah. Zaritsyn. The meeting in Zaritsyn.
So why we fight should be quite helpful for them. Tano Tuva, Dispersed Industry. One, let's get, let's get improved machine tools. Then we'll also get Dispersed Industry 2. We've almost gotten to the meeting in Zaritsyn. We're almost there. Six days left. Five days left. Four days left. Three days left. Two days left. One day left. Zero days left. The moment has finally come. The meeting consisting of members from the left, the right, and the center has commenced. Representatives from the military and the clergy and the bureaucracy have attended several universities that are all in attendance. Tonight, the future of Russia will be decided. It becomes quickly apparent that an easy consensus will not be found. Different members can, send, can, can begin attempting to shout over each other. Politicians and scientists call for open elections, claiming that this is the only way for public support for the people. Conservatives and the military officers count that the last attempt to establish elections ended in absolute disaster, citing the provisional government of Russia. Instead, they'd rather bring back the empire, pointing out those last times Russia had find, found true stability. Finally, a vocal minority of army officers put posted that the government should be a success when only military occur only if only the current government were willing to use harsh methods to eliminate the communists. All the while, Wrangell sits quietly at the head of the table, looking on the enraged men while vocal duels are ultimately the choices he has to make. Which path shall he choose to take? Wrangell's thoughts are interrupted by an aide whispering in his ear. The Okinawa has successfully killed the communists hunting the peasant woman, but the agents discovered something shocking. They claim the woman bears an uncanny resemblance to Anastasia Romanov. She has been long thought dead, but like the rest of the Tsar's family, but this woman thought to be looked right age and looks just like her. Will this new information change Wrangell's plan? This change is nothing continuing with the Congress ahead? Or we must confirm this woman's identity in the Congress. Anastasia the Peasant. Sorry about being quiet, I'm just tired. Um, the German right, I'm scared, guys. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm very, very scared. I'm scared, I'm scared. Oh, that's nice. We'll have all those guys as field marshals, bunch of generals. I'll be very helpful. Anastasia has been rescued. When the young peasant woman is brought before the supreme leader, Wrangel, it becomes immediately clear to him that this woman is Anastasia Romanova. Recognizing her from when he last saw her as a mere child, Anastasia explains that when her family was executed, she managed to escape despite her dreadful wounds thanks to being rescued by a Red Army soldier during the brief window of time when she and the body's families were left on guard. The man got her to safety of a nearby village where the wounds were tended. The respite did not last long, though, as they knew the Bolsheviks would stop at nothing to kill her. Throughout the Russian Civil War, the two were constantly on the run, before settling in a hamlet outside Vikingsburg. At some point during their flight, the two soldiers fell in love. They were married at the hamlet's priest, eventually having two children. She chose to remain hiding, even at the end of the war, because she feared the communists hunting her and the Empire would not tolerate the marriage to a peasant. The story shocks Wrangel, and becomes certainly brought up by some Oxford fans. This is... But this is his firm. His resolve is firm. He tells Anastasia that he will do whatever it takes to put her on the throne. The matter the rules or objections by the aristocracy is uncertain. What he hopes to do is fight game for him. Maybe time will tell. Well, but what about the Pauline laws? Laying the foundation for a new monarchy, which will give us more stability. More stability is always great. We just love ourselves some stability. Stability, stability, stability.
almost gotten off for ourselves, uh, I'm gonna drink some water, just cause, all the speaking, eh? Uh, first I'm gonna do this, though, um, get the excavation one. Take a sip of water. And, I'm back. Anyway, we have 100 political power, this is gonna be nice, so we have a lot more, but, Laying the foundations for a new monarchy, we're right to Pauline laws. Improved machine tools, which is nice. Excavation 2, which will be even nicer. Anakin surprising the Spanish Civil War. Interesting. Revive the right the Pauline laws. Pauline's laws are a legal code governing the dynastic marriage of the family Romanov. They are preparing for the worst. France and Britain announced an alliance. Glad the Russian military junta had one, you know? Good friends of the Capital East. Anastasia, the Zarina. Uh, oh gosh, I guess I'll go for Captain of Industry, and I guess we'll go for a... Um, you know, I don't know, really. They're basically the same. Connected citizen and editor, financial expert, may be the most helpful, though. Our silent workhorse, though... I think we're gonna go with the financial expert or I don't know. It may not I only do very little, so let's go for a silent workhorse. One a day, which will be quite nice to have. They look exactly the same in both Latvia and Lithuania. I really wish they did not have that. They should probably be different. Because, I mean, I don't think there's exactly the same amount of communists. Anyway, that, that's, that's, that's not my problem to deal with. The Hindenburg incident. A close call. Anastasia is arena. Two days left. One day left. The coronation of Tsarina Anastasia Romanova. With the whirlwind of events, Anastasia Romanov was revealed to the public and nearly simultaneously being inaugurated the new Tsarina of Russia. When her tale of survival was revealed to the public, her, their actions are polarizing along the class lines. The peasant and the middle class find her story both romantic and inspirational. Immediately falling in love with this woman not only serves as a peasant for years, but also married one. And now it's become their queen. But the aristocracy is horrified to find that their new king consort is a peasant. And that the Tsarina's child children have an impure bloodline. The news of the new Tsarina have rever reverberated across the world. But the reactions are likewise mixed. The people of the British Empire snub Anastasia for a choice of husband. And disgusted by the Russian version of a constitutional monarchy. Where the ruler holds many executive powers. In America, however, the reactions have been mostly positive, where the people are equally infatuated by his romantic story and excitement surrounding Anastasia Romanov. Long live the Tsarina. Choosing Prime Minister. Here she is. Fortunately, she's got, she's got political unknown. The new monarch for Russia. What a fascinating turn of events. So it looks like they got quite a lot of popularity for democracy now, um, which is interesting, which is not bad. I don't, I don't personally mind, honestly. Um, 
Probably should have gone down partial mode. Yeah, I probably should have done that instead of going down. Anyway, he's going to be helpful. The infrastructure. But I really did wish I went down it now. Um, Two days left. I know, I'm actually, it's like three days left when I said two days left. But who gives a darn? With the news arena on the throne, the time has come to choose the first prime minister and the head of the government of the legislative body. Three men have been suggested as suitable candidates for a job. The first of, of course, former Supreme Leader and the man who put Anastasia on the throne, Peter Rangel. A conservative and a military man, he supports a strong military and traditional social norms. Next is Alexander Kerensky, the one at the head of provisional government before the Civil War, although a progressive liberal, he generally considered moderate in the Russian political landscape. He supports building a strong economy and building ties with other democratic nations. Finally, there's the underdog, Erikeli Teretsi, a proud socialist that first against so it seems that he would make a terrible choice as prime minister, but he's made it clear that he is acceptable towards having a prime minister as long as so as long as it as so as long as it acts towards the benefit of the people, or a monarchy. He promotes a strong social safety net and for the people and chooses to provide a strict neutrality of the world stage. Ultimately it's an anesthesia choice to make. Um He would give us stability, but he gives us more political power gain. So Kerensky is a comfortable middle ground. The path of reconciliation. Nearly Earhart disappears. A loss for aviation. The other world, world, woman has been lost. Though Anastasia still lives, nice. Luckily. The German Soviet Treaty, despite harsh re previous rhetoric against both the people and the ideological leadership of the Russian Empire, Adolf Hitler and Germany has now reached out to us in mutual beneficial research treaty. While exchanging knowledge, our efforts will be new tank designs along with promising other research methods in the future. There's no doubt concerning his previous statement that Germans are doing this for their own sake, but should we go forward with the agreement beside the risk of aiding Adolf Hitler's ambitions? Um... Hmm. Sure. The capitalists are a worse threat to us both. Japan declared war on China. And then we're going to get the Marco Polo Bridge incident in a couple of days. Because Congress has to neutrality. We get a bunch of events here. Marco Polo Bridge incident. I told you. For some reason, the event for Marco Polo Bridge incident comes later. I have no idea in hell why that is. Paradox. Hashtag. Fix your game. That should be. That should be a thing. Paradox. Hashtag. Fix your game. Partial mobilization. Excavation one. Let's go down. Let's go down radio or let's go down computing machine that'll be helpful The trial of Yakov Yorosky. A weak, sickly man stands quietly awaiting the judge's verdict in the center of the courtroom. The look of the fiend despair in his eyes is palpable. He knows everyone knows the outcome of the trial will be. The Tsarina looks from the upper floor and surrounded by her entourage, her face giving nothing, giving away nothing. Yakov Yorosky, after carefully reviewing all evidence and witness testimony, this court finds you guilty on the charges of highest treason and murder. Your public execution will be carried out at 11 in the morning, the judge says to the broken man, but loudly enough for the entire room to hear. Upon hearing the sentence, Yakov falls to his knees and looks up at the Tsarina and beseeches her, Please, have mercy, I'm already dying from illness. I simply wish to spend the remainder of my days with my family. That night still haunts me when I'm sorry for what that happened. The Tsarina stands by and raises her hand to stop the gods from pulling him away. By the power invested in me and the people of Russia, I have I pardoned this man for all crimes he has been convicted of. I have him released in bondage and brought to me in front of the courthouse Anastasia commands. The guardsmen nod and begin undoing Yakov's shackles at the end of Tsarina gracefully exits from the Tsarina is truly benevolent. She is. She's just such a nice person. I mean, she's just, she's just so nice. I mean... Peace talks with Trotsky. The Tsarina's mercy. Flocks of journals quickly surround their duo sitting the step of the courthouse yesterday. There, the Tsarina of Russia accompanied Yakov Yurovsky, the man who organized the killing of the Tsarina's family, and held a speech for the crowd. She called upon the Russian people to find the strength to forgive each other for the decades of hardship and bloodshed, saying it's the only way for the deep wounds of Russia to ever be fully healed. 
Cameras flashed around all around as Arena's embraced the weeping Yakov, touching a moment of mercy and forgiveness was the first step on the path to reconciliation. No one saw this coming. She's just so nice. I mean, she's just such a nice person. And fix your darn game. Why are they that color? Should be the other way around. Fix your darn game paradox. I think. I'm not sure anymore. I'm just you now anyway the expansion Republicans to be the conflict that seems not settled yet I feel like they shouldn't be that color maybe that's just me maybe I'm going insane but I feel like they should be brown anyway we'll get support weapon to one. We're almost about to have a gun ready, so we can start training our infantry in Petrograd. Peace talks with Trotsky, fantastic, capture Stalin. I'm gonna read Peace Talks with Trotsky. The mercy shown by our Zarmina to Yakov Yurovsky is also extension of all of branches of remaining Bolshevik insurgents. Too much blood has been shed, lives and wasted for us to continue. Our agents will attempt to reach out to Leon Trotsky, the leader of the Bolsheviks, see if a peace arrangement can finally be made. There will be a likely demand for reforms, so we are more than happy to provide them. She's just such a nice person, the peasant Tsarina. She's just so nice. She's just fantastic. She's just the best person. Like, give her credit. Credit where credit's due, eh? Our peace talks with Trotsky has met success, and already hostilities have ended. Except for a splinter over the Bolsheviks led by Joseph Stalin, who continues to resist our government. But with Trotsky's help, we should have little difficulty in finding and arresting this absolute bad man. With the help of Trotsky and his insurgents, apprehending Stalin turned out to be little trouble at all. There was a short gunfight where some of his inner circle tried to cover his getaway, but they are unprepared, easily overwhelmed by our soldiers. Stalin is rotting in jail where he belongs. Question will happen next. Maybe it'll be a prudent mercy to merrily exile him, but was he a conservative? So perhaps that execution is the safest course of action. Of course, there's always the option to keep him in prison for the rest of life. He wouldn't be the threat anymore. We always have him on stand to extract more information from imprisonment to life. Hey, we're being nice, okay? Very nice. You must credit. Doesn't even deserve that. Look what we're doing. We're giving it to him. Give us some credit. What credit's due, eh? We're gonna go for Peter Rangel. He doesn't look exactly like him, but, you know, he's great. Gives us some more division organization, so he's gonna be nice to have. And some more division recovery rate, which is fantastic. Probably should have gone down one of these, but anyway. Peace at last in the Russian Empire. Italian announces claims on Yugoslavian territory. They're already accepting the fragile balance in the region. He's at last in 10 days, which will be absolutely fantastic. He's at last. And I guess we'll go for Unify, Ru or Unify Russia. Our new Zarina is a symbol of peace and prosperity. Our Zare new Zarina is a symbol of peace and prosperity that we wish to bring the former Russian Empire and all of its people that includes the former subjects who broke away from the Civil War. These new nations will require more different methods to bring them back to the Empire. Some costlier than others, but God and our Zarina will see it done. Well, that war support's gonna be fantastic. Ready at 4K, so let's start training some more troops.
we not research anti-tank? That's gonna be the next thing we're doing then, eh? Anti-tank. Gonna research that. Where is it? Oh, it's an artillery. Anti-tank. To the anti-tank. We'll go for construction three. It's gonna rush to that. Uh, I don't know why we'd go for the good or the pragmatic when we could wait for the great to be even better. Unify Russia, the handle a conversation, the annexation, deal with the Hetman. Or let's go with the annexation of Tanutuba. Uh, deal with the Hetman. And then the last thing we'll do is Tano Tuva. So he's already getting some guns, which is fantastic. That's fine with me. If he's getting guns for me, I could care less. Any national dance wish of Austria, if that is what they wish. Oh gosh, we have some stuff we can get. I guess we'll go down... Industrial Concern. Love, which will be very helpful. Deal with the hetman. We must annex Ukraine. That's because they fight a large army. That can be useful. That can be very useful indeed. Nationals of Ukraine, the Spanish Civil War. We're just a couple of days away from unification with the Ukrainians. Our ambassador to Ukraine has delivered a treaty to the Hetman's pa pl palace, has recently sent us the Hetman's response. He has refused any plebiscite fat, but received the alternative course action. He has suggested betrothal between Anastasia's daughter and his own son, joining both our houses in a marriage. If this were to occur, the Ukraine would join the Russian Empire peacefully. Anastasia's advice has offered several suggestions. Traditionalists believe that this betrothal was more than agreeable, as royal marriages... Ro as royal... Ma as would uh, it's royal marriage to officials royal marriages were old diplomatic told us in case it will be peace between our countries others in cabinet so blatant power grab say that him is punching well because well above his weight class anastasia is also conflicted how can she marry her own daughter against her will when she was able to marry the man she she loved the royal spy master just had one final option simply assassinate the headman hold as the publicized plan so lightly cost her mom both nations but at least war will be avoided royal marriage is an acceptable we're not gonna have people die. We're just gonna have royal marriage authority. The handling of Belarus. Eleven divisions. Bring them back here. Select all these guys and deploy them right there. Deploy them right there. We'll deploy these guys under Ivan. We'll deploy him on this river line.
There we go. That's a good line for them to be on. Royal marriage. I mean, if we have to go to royal marriage to get unified, we gain that authority. Hey, we're going for the good of the nation here. We ain't going for the good of the anything else. We're going for the good of the nation, eh? Handling of bellows. They have some troops we could use. Not too many, to be fair, but some. Um, radio. We have quite a large economy now. The handling of Belarus. Talks with the officials from Belarus have only made a minimal progress in the last couple of weeks. As Armenia and Anastasia are prime minister have directly involved themselves in the process, the Belarusians want the public site in the country to determine the populace wants to reunite with the empire. Stating that if they truly, stating if they, stating, stating the public, ah, what's that? Want to reunite with the empire. Stating if they truly wish to adhere to the tenets of democracy, we will honor their decision. However, our advisors worry that the vote won't go in our favor, and even if it did, those who vote against us will become the stabilizing influence in the region. Our book advisors says that we rigged the election so it appears that the majority of the nation wants to join us. Pulling the rug from out in you know, their, na their national blog. Our military posited that we, we should send in the troops and force the Africa and extend the end of the day the choices and social choice to make. Um. We are going to go. We cannot risk a fair voting process. Rig the election. I don't care. My name is Anastasia. I don't care. Well, we may be going with. War with artillery, actually. Um, there we go. We can attack there. One, two, three, four, five. Only around five divisions it looks like they had. We'll just send them to here to that. A fallback line over here won't be a Bad choice. That will be our fallback line. We've gained quite a large military in recent years. Quite a large military indeed. There we go, let's just assign all these divisions. Okay, we've got all our divisions out of the way, that's good. These guys we can deploy over here. Shengzi Yan State was puppeted. Interesting. Mr. Yan, he, sw he switched sides. Electric Boogaloo. I wonder why they didn't form the Chinese United Front. They're actually holding decently, so I don't know why. Um, we'll go with this for equipment weapons, too. Um, we'll start equipping ourselves with two Dan's We've not a large economy, but a decently sized army, at least. Conversations with Finland. Um, a 
conference in Helsinki between representatives of both our governments to commence in a debate between the issue of reunification. Although the Finnish, Finnish, Finnish politicians are open to the idea of reunification, the agreement saved demand the absurd and untenable, including massive sums of money spent on regional development in Finland. Our diplomats are a loss of aggressive guides in the capital. We should we accept their demands or attempt to bully them in submission? Um, ooh, that's not great. I think we're going to go peace and compromise will win out. Awesome, we gained some more troops. Lovely Jovely. We'll deploy him under this guy. Oh gosh, looks like did Nor I don't know if Norway gained stuff, like I can't tell now. I'm just going insane, I think. Anyway. There we go, we gained some more troops, which is fantastic. Oh gosh, I can train a lot more troops. We'll just do this one time, though. Oh gosh, these guys need to be assigned. There we go. Oh, the. Oh, gosh. I guess we'll. I probably shouldn't have done that. Well, the annexation of Tanatuba. I wasted a day. So be it. Live and let live. Eh. Alexander Kerensky is coming in handy with the Russian Empire, which is growing in strength. Only around 10, 12 more days. 12 more days, exactly. The XH of Tanatuva should be easy. There we go. Doesn't even take an event. Federalize the Russian Empire. That political power game will come in very much handy. Maybe we can gain agrarian society. Oh gosh, I probably should have gone down that. <sighs> anyway. After we go down this one, we'll do that. I probably made a mistake. Anyway, this is the end of today's episode. I hope you guys all do enjoy and have a good day. My name is Rex. Please like, please subscribe, please leave a comment, please share. Bye!